Hi students! Today we're going to talk about the agents of socialization. So this is a continuation of the topics that we began last week, and this comes from chapter three in your textbook. Uh, additional lectures this week are going to cover some of the information from uh, chapter four and chapter three simultaneously, so I'll make sure and give you a heads up on which chapter you should be in for which topic. This one specifically comes from uh, chapter three, but please remember when you're reading that or when you're watching this video, you got to make these connections from day one all the way until now. Okay, so we're going to try to uh, develop our sociological imaginations uh, because we have to make those connections between macro and micro all the time. Today is going to be one of those times when hopefully you can see the way macro and micro connect to produce social experience and society in general uh, when we talk about the agents of socialization. Okay, so just as a quick refresher, remember it's your responsibility by now, week five in the class, when I say the word socialization, remember it does not mean visiting and hanging out and chatting with your friends. Instead, for sociology class, we have a specific definition for this that means a lifelong learning process, and that learning takes place through social, in, through social activity and social interaction. And when we age and go through our daily lives, we learn different sets of behaviors, attitudes, conditions that are necessary to get us by with our immediate social group, our subculture, and society in general. Okay? So in sociology, we talk about things called agents of socialization, and we try to categorize the people, the, the uh, groups, and the institutions that create social experience for us and therefore create learning processes. So just by looking at this very first part of this explanation of, explanation of the agents of socialization, you should see words that immediately indicate micro or macro part of society and human interaction. Individuals, of course, are at the macro scale. Social groups, like we will study in chapter four more in depth, um, we're going to categorize what these are and learn how to um, assess whether they are particularly important social groups for socialization or minor social groups regarding socialization. But we are all individuals who participate in social groups, and those social groups are guided on the macro scale by the norms, the social facts, um, that social institutions create for us as part of the social structure. So in one of the next videos, probably the next one, we will look specifically at social institutions, that particular component of social structure that is so important for establishing the network of norms that you and I have to follow. So there's a, a word you need to review right now also, norms, if you don't remember that from chapter two's um, discussions on culture norms, social facts, values, these kinds of things uh, come from the societal or structural level. That's where social institutions come from. So agents of, social, of socialization are the individuals, the social groups, and the social institutions that guide us through life. They create life experiences for us, and therefore they create learning experiences for us. And as we age from birth until death, we are constantly participating in social interaction set forth by these things uh, that enable us to get by and participate in society, in our subculture, in our immediate social group, in our age category, all of those different things. We have to have a continuous learning process throughout life, and that's what socialization is. The agents of socialization are the, the who and the how that we, this learning process takes place. Now, down here at the bottom of the board, I have some examples. Now, this is not a comprehensive list of agents of socialization. You see that at the very end, I've got the et cetera written there, okay? But almost all sociologists um, have differing points of view about whatever it is that we discuss. Um, there is, of course, the different theoretical perspectives that you've investigated already this semester, and that gives a, a different point of view. Uh, but the one thing that every sociologist I've ever talked to and every textbook I've ever consulted, the one thing that we all agree on mark your calendars, the one thing we all agree on is that family is the most important agent of socialization in any society anywhere. 
And that is because family is really the unit that is in control of our initial learning process, that communication process, or that component of culture that we call language and symbols. Those things we learn from our family unit first. And please make note that I'm using a very generic term, family unit. I'm not saying mommy and daddy and sister and brother. I'm saying family unit. Because all over the world globally, there are different representations of families, okay? Different members. People that you and I call mom and dad might not exactly exist that way in some family structures in other societies. That's why social institutions and the norms that they establish in a society are important guidelines for the way that individuals behave in family units, okay? Um, school. School is another agent of socialization. Please notice I am not saying the education system right now because the education system, bells and whistles should go off to say, oh, that's a macro scale social institution that we'll talk about in a follow-up follow lecture. But school is the individual classroom, the individual set of people who become your peers, the people who become your authority figures like teachers and assistant principals that create individual social interaction with you on a daily basis. So, you know, as you get as you get to school age, school also could include if you participated in daycare, if you attended daycare, that would include those kinds of settings also where you're in that organized a peer group kind of setting with authority figures who are not members of your family unit. So they, they um, affect your early socialization too, but family is really the one that's the most, um, the most important in your initial early socialization process. Okay, so other institutions, excuse me, other agents of socialization, pardon me, other agents of socialization that I have used as um, examples here are peers. And so for instance, classmates in a schoolroom are peers, people in your um, Sunday school class are peers, people who are in your cul-de-sac in your neighborhood or your apartment complex who are the people that you hang out with co-workers, these are peers. In some textbooks that I've reviewed, sometimes people list co-workers and friends separately. I'm grouping them together because your co-workers could be your peers, your classmates could be your peers, your BFF is your peer, okay? So these people create life experience with us and therefore through that interaction that we have, we learn behaviors. We learn how to cope, how to adjust, how to behave and participate in our situation in life, whether that is what society expects of us or whether that is what the individual micro scale experience um, or, or situation calls from us. We will be looking at additional topics from chapter three that have to do with the social construction of personality and self-concept. We're going to look at people like Charles Horton Cooley and George Herbert Mead who look at presentation of the self in everyday life and how we get that from micro scale interaction with each other. And of course that is a reflection of larger scale social, social situations, larger scale norms and patterns that we inherit at birth. Okay, so media is listed here. Also, media, think of this as anything that's used to communicate large messages, uh, whether you are on a multiplayer video game or whether you are reading an old classic novel, Charles Dickens or something, right? You are participating or getting messages from media. SpongeBob SquarePants is media, okay? Just like the news broadcasts and the memes that you get on Facebook that give you coronavirus updates and things like this. So media sends messages, gives us information, we adjust our behavior based on that information, we learn things from that information. Media is an agent of socialization. Think about the rating system that we have on movies or, or video games or TV shows. Those rating systems are used as a guideline for, guess what, your caregivers in order to know whether they want you to be exposed to this kind of behavior or that kind of behavior at your early age. Now, why does your early age matter? Go back to the last video last week and look at Jean Piaget and Sigmund Freud among the other psychologists that are highlighted in chapter three in order to learn why it's important for us to know as sociologists that children have a different processing 
capacity in their early years than we do as adults. So those rating systems are there really as a guideline to kind of help people who are in charge of a youngster's life experiences know whether they actually want them to be exposed to that kind of content that maybe that the youngster is not yet able to process fully and therefore they don't want them to get, um, I guess I'll use the word warped point of view moving forward. So um, media is a big one, church, not everybody goes to church, but this is another situation like school where, where you have organized behavior and you learn specific messages about specific behavioral expectations. You can get peer groups from churches. The government is a major agent of socialization. You've constantly got um, requirements from the government that we have to participate in, shots for, in infancy, shots before you go to school, your social security card, your birth certificate, all of these things that you might not be aware of as a child, but your caregiver is, your, your um, driver's permit, your driver's license, your work permit, all of these different kinds of things are um, organized and controlled by government and by laws, and they affect our, our regular behavior. So, um, so all of these things and more are agents of socialization and please leave a good space of notes underneath this one for the next video when we talk specifically about social institutions and that information is going to be addressed really in chapter four because it's part of the complex framework that we call social structure that makes up our society so tune in again for more enlightening topics i'll see you next time